Hi, New Hope. So good to be with you, and I'm excited to bring to you another great hymn of our faith. This one is called Take My Life and Let It Be. The author of the lyric is Francis Ridley Havergal. The author of the tune is Caesar Milan. Francis Ridley Havergal, born on December 14, 1836, in Astley, Worcestershire, England, is often referred to as the consecration poet. It has been said that the beauty of a consecrated life has never been more perfectly revealed than in her daily living. Wherever she saw spiritual and physical needs, Frances Havergal was there with genuine concern. At the age of four, she began reading and memorizing the Bible. At the age of seven, she was already writing her thoughts in verse. She was greatly encouraged by her father, William Havergal, an influential Anglican clergyman who for many years was involved in improving and composing English hymnody. Throughout her brief life, Miss Havergal was frail and delicate in health, yet she was an avid student, writer, and composer. She learned several languages, including Greek and Hebrew. In her childhood years, Frances lived in morbid fear that she would not be counted among God's elect. However, during her early adolescence, she had a vital conversion experience and later wrote, quote, There and then I committed my soul to the Savior, and earth and heaven seemed bright from that moment, end quote. She was a natural musician with a voice so pleasing that she sought at, was sought after as a concert soloist. She was also known as a brilliant pianist of the classics. Despite these musical talents, coupled with a vibrant personality offering possibilities for much worldly acclaim, her life's mission was to sing and work for Jesus. Take My Life and Let It Be was written by Miss Havergal in 1874. She had left the following account. I went for a little visit of five days. There were 10 persons in the house. Some were unconverted and long prayed for. Some converted, but not rejoicing Christians. He gave me the prayer, Lord, give me all in this house. And he just did. Before I left the house, everyone had got a blessing. The last night of my visit, I was too happy to sleep and passed most of the night in renewal of my consecration. And these little couplets formed themselves and chimed in my heart one after another till they finished with, quote, ever only all for thee, end quote. While Frances Havergal was writing her many fine hymns in England, Fanny Crosby, America's blind poetess, was also enriching lives with her numerous favorites. Although these two women never met, each was an ardent admirer of the other. At the age of 42, when told by her physician that her physical condition was serious and that she did not have long to live, Ms. Havergal replied, quote, if I am really going, it is too good to be true, end quote. At the bottom of her bed, she had her favorite text placed where she could readily see it. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Caesar Milan composed this tune in 1823. An ordained pastor of the state reformed church in Switzerland, he was actually dismissed from this church for his strong preaching against the formalism and spiritual apathy there. He became a fervent leader in his country for the evangelical faith. He was also a noted evangelist who made preaching tours of France, Belgium, and Great Britain. Although he wrote over a thousand hymn texts and tunes, he is remembered chiefly for this particular tune. Hendon is the name of it, thought to be named after a high hill located a few miles northeast of St. Paul's Cathedral in London, England. The tune first appeared in an American hymnal published by Lowell Mason in 1841. Francis Havergal, 
writes these lyrics of a marvelous hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. This hymn truly is a prayer of consecration. Would you lift your voice with me? Let's pray together.